everyone, it's Southern Bell Canto. I have another book review for you today. Happy Vlogmas. Um, this isn't a holiday read, but it's one that I wanted to complete before um, the end of December because this was a Christmas present from Christmas 2020. So I wanted to make sure as part of like a resolution slash um, goals for this year to read every book that I was given for Christmas so then that way I don't have like overlap of books and stuff like that so this is um a book oh obviously <laughs> it is Spy by Daniel Steele um this was a fairly recent book for Daniel Steele let me see what is published I think 2019 so it's fairly new for her only about 20 books late <laughs> you know she writes so many um this was an historical fiction and it dealt with a female spy. So before I jump into more about the book, my spice rating for the book was like 0.5 or 0. There was no sex scenes at all, and if there was any mention of it, it was like um, the characters wanting to um, have sex before marriage, and it was like, you know, kind of taboo for the 1940s or whatever. So that was basically the gist of it. I don't even think there was a sex slash love scene, which Daniel Steele's uh, love scenes thus, thus far that I've read aren't graphic in any sort of way. I don't know if hers were a little more steamy like in the 70s and 80s when she first started writing because I know there's some sort of alluding to that in the um, show Friends. I remember I think it's Rachel talks about like a Daniel Steele novel being steamy and then I think um, Chandler's mother is I believe a romance author but she writes like the stereotypical like bodice ripper or like um erotic fantasy novels of like the 90s and I thought she made like sort of a jab at Daniel Steele I'm not quite sure <laughs> but I do remember Daniel Steele being um, referenced on Friends and then there's also a reference to Daniel Steele by Blanche on the Golden Girls and Blanche is like having a tough time she's like the only thing I'm living for is the new Daniel Steele novel <laughs> so yeah I thought that was kind of funny but, so this is an historical uh, romance, well, not a romance, it's historical fiction. Um, there is a romance, but it isn't the main purpose. This is a s typical Daniel Steele book, I would say, where it follows a woman's life and journey. So it's not necessarily romance, although it may have romantic elements. It's more of a full scope story of a woman. I don't really know how to put that in a better <laughs> definition but if you've read Daniel Steele especially her recent books which is usually what I read they're almost always about a woman and sort of either her whole life journey or she's faced an obstacle and it's sort of like how she works through a strong issue but this one dealt with um, a woman's life, sort of. So it starts when the main character is Alexandra Wickham, but she goes by Alex. And I think it basically starts when Alex is 18. And this is in like the late 30s, early 40s, 1930s, 40s. And she lives outside of London, England. I believe it's Hampshire or Hampfordshire. Um, doesn't say. But she is affluent, which is a common theme in Daniel Steele novels. And she has had like a coming out sort of thing, like the ball, not like, you know, uh, sexuality. But she's had a coming out and she was like introduced to society. So she basically had like her first season, which if you've read historical romances, you know what I'm talking about. They still do this today. I have friends that I've had like coming out and they've had like the cotillions and all that sort of jazz. I did cotillion when I was in fifth grade and I, mean, I got the letter for the second one in sixth grade and I threw it away because I didn't want to go. <laughs> I'd rather read my Nancy Drew books, which I did. <laughs> but yes, people still do this today, which is interesting. And there's a big like cotillion coming out that you can do at the plaza, which I've actually had a friend that did that and was like the, the, money of the money do that so interesting so anyway she's had it coming out and she's 18 and she's like basically when she, doing that it's like okay we have a lovely daughter she's have a good family she's rich she you know don't really do dowries back then but you know kind of do 
and, um, you know, find a man on the marriage market. And so that's sort of what her life is. And she's told by her, basically her whole family, that she speaks her opinion too much. And she's not, like, ladylike enough. Which is interesting because we're told that, but nothing really in the story kind of projected that idea. I mean, kind of, but they made a big deal about it in, like, the first couple of pages. But I never really saw Alex as really opinionated or, you know, kind of putting it to the man sort of thing. But she's, you know, she has sort of her life laid out for her. And then World War II starts really revving up in England. And, you know, it's being bombed like every single night by um, Germany and other territories. And so her brothers enlist in the military. One is in Air Force. And I believe the other one might have gone into the Army. But I know one of them was at least Air Force. They might have both been Air Force. And she, it doesn't, I think it's part of the army. She's a, like a lorry driver and a, um, ambulance driver. And I think sort of like a kind of a nurse, you know, not, she doesn't have like a nursing license, but she takes care of like, you know, if someone's like on the mend, I think she does that sort of thing. She's not like a, you know, if someone's bleeding out. She's not going to like do that sort of thing. She's more like. Um, well, not a candy striper, but, you know, she's helping. So, man, this is such a this bad review, but I just got home and I'm really tired, but I really wanted to do this review for everyone. Sorry for the rambling, but it was a good story. I gave it three out of five stars. Um, I didn't love it. I love the first, um, quarter. So if this was set into acts, like four acts, the first act was very good. And then it just got really sped up and I lost um, interest and motivation from the characters. That can be a common issue with some Daniel Steele novels is that it'll be like only a couple years when you first start the book, like the characters aged a little. And then like all of a sudden it's going year after year after year after year. Like she went in like the last shoot 75 pages or 100 pages. It went 30 years, and that's just not enough time to, you know, get the plot going. The plot was moving so fast. Like, I understand she was a spy, but it wasn't like a spy novel. It wasn't like James Bond or even... Um, one of my favorite spy novels is The Little Drummer Girl by John Le Carre, which is a wonderful miniseries with Florence Pugh. Highly recommend. It's on... It was on Sundance, so you might be able to get it free on there if you have Sundance, but it's like... It's not expensive to buy. I bought it on Amazon Prime, and I think it was like it's it's under twenty dollars. I think it's like fourteen, but it's like a mini series. It's very good. The book is excellent. It is about four hundred pages, and it's a very good book. It's one of my favorite books. It was my favorite book of 20, 2020 or twenty nineteen. I can't remember. <laughs> it's been so long, and I actually loved it so much. I gifted it to my cousin for her Christmas present last year. Because I loved it that much. It was so good. But this isn't a spy novel. She's more just so a spy. And the missions were exciting. But they go by so fast. I mean, Daniel Steele is writing like, you know, she gives you a sentence. Sometimes it's like, okay. <laughs> it's like, we're moving forward. So there's a really cool scene. When I guess it was still during World War II. This was in the first act. And that's the part I loved the most. And so... I think I jumped a lot ahead. So she becomes a spy. She's asked by the o SOE, which I guess is like a secret agency, like FBI maybe, to be a spy for them because she's really good at languages. She speaks German, Italian, French fluently, and she just has the look for a spy or whatever. And so she does some missions for them this is during World War II. And one of her missions, I'm not quite sure what her motivation was. I think it was to get information or something about someone. It never really said, or I missed it. But anyway, she ends up in um, either Paris or, it must have been Paris. So she ends up in Paris and she like has to do this character of a really rich, affluent young widow. And so she wears like Christian Dior suits and she's staying at the, the Ritz Carlisle maybe in like, 
It's where Gabrielle Chanel lives, which is kind of cool. And there's a scene where she's basically, she meets like her, um, her target, not, she doesn't kill him, but like the person she's supposed to meet for the mission. And he basically falls in love with her and wants her, her to be his mistress, which I thought was really ironic because the guy that was, um, the, basically the villain, he wanted her to be a mistress and live on his yacht in the, the South of France, which was really ironic because one of her, one of the most recent Daniel Steelswell is written before this. So like 2015 or something like that. She wrote a book called the mistress and that's a really good book. It's one of my favorite Daniel Steeles. Anyway. So the mistress takes place in the South of France and he's on a yacht. So I thought that was kind of ironic. Maybe it was kind of like a joke for, um, Daniel Steele readers to be like, ha, see, this is a common thing. You know, get your mistress in France and go to the South of France and, chill on your yacht. I thought that was kind of funny. I don't know if that was intentional as a joke for her, um, like her typical reader or people that have read her books, but I thought it was really funny because it, you know, reminded me of her other story, the, the mistress. So that was a cool scene with the mission and there was some excitement there, but I mean, it wasn't like she was, there was never a time where she was really held hostage or had to be faced with taking her cyanide pill, her cyanide pill, she did have to kill someone, but it wasn't, it was sort of so fast when it happened. It wasn't like thrilling to read, I guess, which is sad because I had really high hopes for this book. I mean, I love Daniel Steele. She's one of my favorites and it was, it was good. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. I didn't, I did not, not enjoy reading it, but it just was so rushed and sometimes that works for her books. Like another one that I've read by her was, I think it's called like The Right Time or About the Right Time. It's a fairly recent one and the girl's kind of looking over her shoulder and it's like sort of a solid and green color. So if you see that one, that one's really good. I'll try to find that book if you want to read it. I can find the actual, actual title. It's really good. But this one was just so sped up so fast. But I just lost motivation and interest and was kind of bummed about it because had a lot of potential in the first quarter. It was so good. I wish she had kept it all in the 1940s, like, um, 1940s. Because at one point, I really thought that Alexander was going to be captured and, like, she would somehow be put, like, in a concentration camp. I really thought that was going to happen at one point, and it didn't. And I thought that would have been an interesting story to have a woman that, um, is a spy and she just somehow, you know, ends up having to survive the Holocaust. I would, I thought that would have been interesting, but that never happened. I mean, there was a scene where she was in Germany at least twice. I really thought, oh my gosh, this might happen, but no. So I was kind of bummed about not like that scenario. That would be horrible, but I was, I expected some more drama, especially with the title spy. But it was more like, as I said in my review, it was sort of the life of a woman who was a spy. So it's the woman behind the espionage, really. So it's about her life more so than her job, if that makes sense. So, but it wasn't like a great life. It was, it was just like, you know, her everyday life sort of thing. It wasn't like trying to hide her true identity. There was never a time where she was almost caught in a lie by her spouse or children or about where was she going or what was she doing. So yeah, I, I really thought there's going to be a little more, not heat, but like excitement and maybe adrenaline in the book. And there wasn't, and I think it really had a lot of potential to do that. I thought this was a really, really cool story. And like I said, I loved that World War II scene in England. And I love the part where she was undercover in Paris. That was just so cool. In my head, I kept thinking of like Grace Kelly when she did to, um, to catch a thief, the Hitchcock film. I, that's who I imagine. Cause the, I think in the story, she's blonde and, and as you can see from the cover, the little model is blonde as well, but yeah, good story. Not my favorite, but of course I will read more Danielle Steele's. I'm glad I did read it. I just, I would have liked to read, I would like to rewrite. Because it had such potential. I mean, the cover is really interesting. 
It kind of looks like she's at a church, but it could be like a train station. Very interesting. And yeah, just a bummer, which is kind of sad because I think the other book I read by Daniel Stilva wasn't my favorite either. But I've read some of her books that are like my all-time favorite books of all time, like just wonderful stories. And she's a really great storyteller. Her books are always very cinematic, where it's almost like watching a film. Maybe more so a melodrama or television film. But her stories are really, really good. So um, I would say if you want to find your first Daniel Steele, I would skip Spy. Um, unless you really love historical fiction, then I would try Spy. Because the first quarter is wonderful. I would have had a ball. This would have been a five-star read if it was all in the 40s. Like if it hadn't had 30 years go by so fast with so much and so much happening but without drama just like it had drama but it wasn't like spy drama which is what I wanted well I think I have rambled enough hopefully this is coherent in my review um yeah I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I hope to be back soon with some other great books I actually have a book that is in the mail I am going to read the Outlander series and I know, Sacrilege. I have read the first book before the show came out. I bought it in the summer, so I guess like summer 14, and read the first book. And I was, it was like, okay. I had some stuff going on at the time where I wasn't prepared for all the sexual violence. And that kind of deterred me. And also the size of the books. But now I'm sort of used to big books. And I love the show. I actually, I, I just, I wasn't such a big fan of the book, the season one of the book. So I, when I started watching the show again, I started watching season two first and then three and four. I've been watching on Netflix and then I'm now rewatching season one. And I actually never finished season one. I watched like part one because that was when they had like part one and then like a six month break and then part two. So I think I've ahead of what I used to, what I've seen, but I read the book before all that. But yeah, um, I'm actually going to read the series starting with The Fiery Cross. I know I'm going to be missing some things, but I don't want to reread stuff that I know the plot to right away. And so I want to read The Fiery Cross and then hopefully in a month or so it's going to be on Netflix so I can watch the show. And then I'm basically I'm actually for my Christmas getting all the books I, I had the first book and lost it so yeah I'm gonna get all the books and also the companion books um I actually put them on my Christmas list so the companion books aren't necessary which I think they might be because there's so much like history and sort of low-key world building not in like a science fiction or fantasy but just in a historical sense and like you know family trees and who's this person because I think that happens a lot well, I have rambled so much. I am so sorry. If you've gotten through this video, leave a mermaid emoji because you are the real v MVP. Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, as well as comment. Um, let me know if you would like a dedicated Danielle Steele video. She's one of my favorite authors. I said I would do it. I need to either figure out how to do um, InShot where I put the pictures of the books or get up the courage to go to my library. I have been avoiding the library just because of all the the high numbers in my town, you know, global high numbers. So I'm laying low, I'm buying books, which I used to always go to the library, but I might go and get the books because most of the time I, I get books from library. I used, I used to before numbers increased, if you know what I mean. I don't want to say stuff because, you know, I don't want to get flagged or written something. <laughs> well, everyone have a great day. Um, I'll see y'all soon. Happy Vlogmas. Bye everyone.